Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about the use of arrays in shell scripting. Here is the learning outcome. By the end of this session, students will be able to apply the concept of arrays in shell scripts. So first of all, we'll be discussing about uh, what are variables and then recall some of the basic definitions of arrays from other programming languages. Then I'll show you the demonstration. So it's a good moment now to discuss about uh, what is meant by an array in any programming language. You can pause the video for a while and then uh, think on it, and then uh, resume the video. So basically, uh, array is nothing but a subset. Of, so array is nothing but a collection of similar data types, as you can see here. So there are uh, six array elements, which are uh, sitting side by side, as shown in the block diagram here. And whatever values that are displayed in the form of indices here, is uh, generally referred as either index or the address of this particular array. So array is basically a collection of common data types uh, which are held together so that you need not to define individual variables for storing individual data. The things will be more clear uh, when we get into the demonstration. So well, let us get started with the basic block diagram of Unix system. So as you are able to see on the screen, uh, basically we have hardware here. So the PC or the computer or the CPU, which we have seen earlier in the previous slide, is going to rely somewhere here under the hardware block, which is uh, overlapped by something known as a kernel. So kernel is nothing but the core, uh, uh, what we can call a system or the core uh, cores of this particular uh, an operating system. So hardware is overlapped by a kernel. So this kernel is nothing but a sort of software layer which is installed onto your hardware and which is then uh, controlled by another layer called shell. So as you can see, there are a variety of shell available in the uh, Unix environment. So we will be generally calling it a shell. So shell will be acting as a bridge between the outer application layer and the inner hardware layer. So this is the drop structure, like we have level number one, two, three, and four. So level number one is the core hardware, like maybe a CPU or some sort of uh, uh, PC on which we are installing an operating system. So the operating system has kernel, which has a direct linkage with the hardware. And then this kernel can be uh, communicating with uh, applications like either a, uh, maybe our Gmail or it could be an FTP server or it could be any uh, Word or a text editor. So these text editors, are nothing but those are the application layers which uh, uh, which can be generally accessed by the users. So keeping this architecture or so-called the block diagram of a Unix operating system, uh, we have seen that there is a shell in between the kernel and the application layer. So if you have this knowledge of how to access the hardware, maybe you are connecting some sort of USB drives uh, to your USB port on a computer and then you want to access it, you need to access it through an application, then probably uh, you should be capable enough to write a shell program to uh, write a command which would access the definite hardware which you're interested in. So this is quite possible if you are known to this basic block diagram of Unix system. So I have logged in into the Ubuntu operating system Then let me first of all open the terminal and then let us first of all log in with the root password and then let me make a new folder called 3. I'm entering into this folder and let me list down. So currently there is no content available in this particular folder. So today we'll be discussing about arrays. Uh, let me show you exactly how the things happen. Uh, so let us quickly define a new shell file called array.sh. So as usual, we are going to type the shebang first then I'll be first of all showing you uh, the difference between variables and arrays. So for instance, if I'm uh, defining a 
variable with a name called name01 where I am storing the data called 1 in the text format. Similarly, I am writing name2 defined for storing a text called 2 and then I define the last variable which holds a data called 3. Now you can access any of the individual data by using a sign called dollar. So for instance say name 01. So we can expect here that whenever I execute this it will show me uh, one displayed on the screen. So before that let me uh, make it executable then if I execute this yes. So as you are able to see I have echoed only the content of name 1. But for instance if I want to display the contents of each and every variable then it is going to be a little bit difficult. So currently uh, the thing is that I only have three variables but in case if I am having uh, more than 10 and hundreds and thousands of variables then probably it is going to be the toughest part to write the same statement again and again and that becomes a little bit inappropriate in programming language perspective. So definitely uh, we need to find a way of uh, doing the things in a different way. So what I will do is I will define only a single variable. So the variable name is going to be name but now I am putting square braces here which is similar to other programming languages like Java and C and C++. So I have only single variable uh, whereas I am trying to refer the array subpositions with the help of the index values like we have seen in our slide uh, earlier. So currently name of 0 holds 1, name of 1 holds 2 and name of uh, 2 holds 3. Now I want to print the same value called 1 similar to the output which we have printed earlier. So I am simply uh, writing dollar name at the index of 0. I have saved it and let me execute it and see what output I am getting. So it is currently displaying a 1 of 0. Okay, So it is uh, meaning that we need not to uh, write anything like this. So if you execute this, yes. So this is the proper syntax of uh, defining an array initializing it and then uh, you can directly execute it for uh, displaying the output. So for instance if I want to echo all the elements together of this particular uh, array called name then I need to put a bracket which is going to be a curly brace. So it will be name of everything. So generally uh, it is like a star. Okay, so. I need to put the dollar here. So dollar name of star has to be enclosed inside the curly braces. So now if you try to access, uh, it should display you everything. So the syntax for this is going to be So the syntax for this is going to be, so here is the proper syntax, you put a curly brace, uh, curly braces enclosing the name of the array and then the star and then you need to put this entire thing inside the double quotes so that whenever you execute it will display you everything. So this is uh, the exact way of how we can use arrays in our programming uh, of shell scripts. So this is going to be very much beneficial like reading uh, thousands of files available in a given directory or uh, maybe in our upcoming videos we will be able to see like you are trying to read some list which has some thousands and lakhs of uh, entries. You need to uh, convert everything and the data needs to be held inside a specific variable. So in case if you are defining a single variable and that variable is able to only store 
a single data at given moment of time that is generally referred as a scalar variable. So this is how we generally identify uh, whether a given variable holder is a scalar variable or an array. So arrays are going to be very much handy in holding the data and processing the data related aspects. Here are the references used. Thank you.